All right, let's get a fecal egg count done for this guy. I'm going to lead you guys through the process of how to do one in case you ever want to do one yourself on your own horse or a friend or something. It's not very difficult and you don't need a lot of stuff. Um, surprisingly easy actually when I first discovered it. So the uh, tools that I'm going to use for this is uh, first is a McMaster's fecal egg count test kit. Uh, which you can buy online. I think they're 50 bucks or something. I can't remember. I bought this four or five years ago and um, never looked back. But this little kit comes with uh, two of these little vials that help you measure out um, how much uh, flotation solution to fecal material. Uh, you get a couple of these little baby syringes, which are here. It's adorable little things. And uh, they are going to be used to draw out uh, some of the solution and hopefully the eggs from the vial. And then it comes with a couple of these McMaster's slides. You don't need these slides, um, but they are, they make the job easy because they've got these little grids on them. And we'll take a look here um, with the microscope. And uh, I've got my phone set up so that we'll be able to see this uh, together. So that's a basic McMaster's kit that you would use for this if you wanted to. If not, there are other ways to do it. Probably plenty of videos online. I haven't looked. Uh, I have no idea. I use a simple pair of chopsticks to mess around with the poop. Pull it out, put it in the vials and stuff. You can use whatever you want. I find them easy because I'm rather good at chopsticks, so no problem. The last thing that we're going to need for separating out the poop and the eggs is going to be this material called a flotation solution. This is a brand called Fecasol. It's a sodium nitrate solution, and it's got a very specific gravity of 1.2, so that um, essentially it is going to, because it's a liquid, it separates out the eggs from the poop, and it will cause the eggs to float within it instead of the eggs sinking um, uh, down to the bottom or something like that. So because the eggs will float inside of the solution, we can then draw out some of the solution. We'll put it in the slides and make something happen. So the last thing you need as a tool itself is a microscope. You don't need a really fantastic, fancy thing. Uh, honestly, as long as it gets 10 times uh, magnification, you're good. You don't need 40. I think mine goes up to 100. Uh, 40 and then 4. Yeah, 0 0.10, 0 0.65, and the other lens is a 0.25. So uh, 10 times is all we need. Um, anything more than that, you won't really know. Uh, unless you're really getting into the biology of things, you won't really know what you're looking at. So, first order of business is to grab our uh, little vials here, and we're going to fill these up with our sodium nitrate solution. And uh, it's a big jug, so all I've done is I've poked a tiny little hole at the top of the film, whatever, uh, little cover thing, and a tiny little hole at the top so that it doesn't go glug glug, and then it just pours out really gently and nicely in a controlled way. And for this particular test, we fill it up uh, to the 26 milliliter. There's a little line on here. I don't know if I'll be able to focus in on it, um, but we should be able, you should be able to see a little line right here, and uh, that says 26 milliliters. Um, if we were gonna do sheep and goat, where we do 28 milliliters, we'd add enough poop to do 28, make it go up to 28 milliliters, but we're doing horses, so we add enough poop to go up to the next line up from that, which is 30 milliliters. So I'm gonna fill both of these. And then we're done with the flotation solution. So once we've got that done, it's important to get a good mixture of poop. Now, a lot of times people will take from two different piles. Um, I don't, I, I don't, 
if you if you want to get a larger uh, amount of data, different data sets, then you can do that. I found that if I just grab from one pile, we're fine. Um, so if we take a look here, we can see uh, the poop here. I'll move this out of the way. And generally what I'll do is I'll have a piece of cardboard or a little bowl or something like that and I'll, um, I'll work over top of it so I don't get my table uh, dirty. I mean, it's not dirty, dirty, but you know, it's dirty enough that you're like, nee, you know. And what you're going to do is you're going to take these little balls of poop, and at the very least, you know, three or four of them, and just take them and start to sort of mix them up, either in whatever thing you've chosen to grab them and hold them in. I'm using just this plastic bag that I use to go grab the poop. This is no different than, you know, if you've got a dog. Um, uh, and you go to pick up poop, you know, you just turn the bag inside out or something like that and pick up the poop and then turn it the other way around, tie it up and chuck it in the garbage. Um, I'm seeing a lot of big pieces of hay in here, so I'm looking forward to getting his teeth done. Hopefully he's he's chewing as much as he should, or can. Um, so it's another thing you can do, you can kind of check out the poop and just see, you know, how much they are chewing up whether it's really properly ground up or if they're leaving big stalks in there. Um, so then once you've got it sort of mixed up you can just take it and dump it into the vial and remember we want to dump in enough that it goes up to the next line which is going to make it be 30 milliliters of material in the vial. And so in it goes. Now we're doing science. Um, this is a good skill to have. So that's 30 mil. It's made it up to the top. Um, I don't know if you can properly see that, hopefully. And uh, now we'll do the other one. So we'll mix up a little bit more and sort of grab from a different spot. Because uh, there are cases where one slide will be ridiculously more. See, I dropped some there. It's a good thing we got the cardboard. Um, and you're like, whoa, what happened there? And so you, you generally, obviously, err on the side of caution of um, going with the one that has more eggs and, uh, and so we'll talk about that as we go okay that's pretty good and and that's it now the rest of this just kind of I don't know chuck it on the ground we don't need it anymore um, okay so once this is done you can take your chopsticks or mixer, some kind of mixer, and we're going to mix for a little while. And uh, while we mix, let's just chit chat a little about um, uh, uh, why we're doing this and, and, and what to come of it. So essentially, when you're doing a fecal egg count, you're, you're looking for little eggs of worms, different types of worms, that are in the intestines of a horse. Now, from my understanding, a few worms is not so bad, or a few eggs or whatnot, it's not too bad. Um, it's when it's in an excess amount, and uh, I'll discuss it at the end, uh, what an excess, or what is deemed as an excess amount, and what that means. But, uh, you know, what we're trying to do is we're trying to find these eggs, count the amount of eggs, and we're, from that we can sort of extrapolate through you know other people's trial and error of, of how much um, how many uh, worms are possibly in the horse now as you see here I'm trying not to mix these two if this one you know the eggs will stick to there and so no, we'll just do them separate so we want to keep them separate 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 that's why there's two vials that's why there's two syringes that's why there's two slides so anyways um, so when we find an amount of eggs in here, maybe that it's really high, we can we can probably say there's an awful lot of worms because an awful lot of worms will put out an awful lot of eggs. Very few worms will put out very few eggs. Um, now the only way to proper you know figure out how many worms are in a horse's body is to take them apart and cut them open and start counting, but we're not doing that because they're still alive. Um, but um, from there you you'd possibly worm them now once you worm them you're really only killing the live worms you're not killing any eggs the eggs still stay stay just fine and so your worming solution kind of goes through them maybe a few of those eggs hatch while the worming solution is going through so they die but everything that didn't hatch is still an egg didn't die and will hatch later so maybe you know anywhere from 
uh, a day to a week later, and then you've got a pile of worms. Now, the amount of time before the worm will put out more eggs, I think is a couple of weeks. So two weeks after worming once, you must worm again. Otherwise, whatever you've done is gonna be pretty much ineffective because all the worms that you just finished killing that laid eggs, uh, their eggs will be uh, hatching and making worms. And then two weeks later, those worms will lay more eggs and you might as well have just put your money into the garbage and say goodbye to it or fire and burn it away. Okay, so that's pretty good mix. We've got lots of mixings going on and I've let them sit a little bit, uh, usually. And um, one of the tricks that my veterinarian's assistant taught me or told me is uh, they don't actually use these syringe things. They usually fill them all the way to the tippy top. They put the slide on top and then whatever sticks to the slide is the count. Uh, I, I'm not sure. I mean, I guess that's effective, so you could try that. But what I do is I'll sort of let it sit, and then when I go to um, grab, we're going to use these little syringes to grab solution from the top area. And so one of the things I'll do once once it's sort of, it'll start to settle. And even if it's a flotation solution, it generally doesn't float much of the hay, because what you don't want is to get a bunch of um, particles of hay if you can help it. So what I'll do is I'll just sort of push down a little bit those um, particles so I don't suck them up and put them in the slide. Otherwise it, it just gets in the way. We'll see that as we do this. So uh, we'll give it a second here and uh, grab our slides while we're sort of waiting. Um, now there's two slides here and each of them have two windows to work from. Um, now I put my fingerprints all over them, so let's give those a quick cleanings with my shirt. Um, obviously you'd probably want to use something quite soft that won't have a chance of scratching, but this glass is pretty tough. I, I haven't found any scratches so far using my shirt method. Um, so each one has two, so what we're going to do is we're going to draw from here. Um, and again, we're just taking lots of data sets. See, it's already plugged up. Hang on a second. There we go. Okay, so once we get a good draw of material, we can take that and you just put it up against the edge and just sort of squirt it in like so until it's full, but not too full. Otherwise, it'll just squirt out the side and it'll look like that. I'm going to chuck that back in there. And uh, we're going to give another little stir just to see. Not much, not much. Let that settle for a second. And um, try again. We'll draw, see we're stuck with particles of hay. It stops the material from coming up. So we want to get a good amount. So I'm just going to draw up. That's pretty good. Get rid of that bunch on the end. And then hopefully that's enough, and we'll chuck that in there. Oops. There we go. Okay, so that's not bad. Now this one's done. We'll call that completely done. Next syringe over. This one sat for a little bit. We've got our slide here. Um, and so we're going to take f essentially four data sets. Oh, it's plugged up. Plugged up again. There we go. That's pretty good. And in this goes. And it just sort of squeezes in, you know, like there's, it just, you just squeeze it in carefully. Don't go too fast. Put the rest back. Give this another quick stir. Briefly. And um, not much. Just let that settle for a second and then draw up again. Somebody might say, you should have gloves on. Yeah, maybe. I don't really find this stuff is overly toxic of any sorts. Dogs eat it, obviously. And none of them die. Not that you probably couldn't get maybe a little sick, but I'm fine, so no worries. Okay, so we are completely done with this stuff here. Um, we're gonna let these sit, and I'll be back in a second once I've kind of cleaned this up. The setup I have here, as I've said, is just a basic um, microscope with a 10 times uh, magnification lens setup. Uh, it, uh, it, it's, 
it's a plug-in type. I think it's got a battery. I don't think the battery works anymore, but bottom line is there's a light at the bottom, shines a light up through there, through our slide and into the lens. Now, to be able to see this, uh, I find, I personally find it a real pain to look through the um, eyepiece. And so what I've done is I've set up my phone uh, to look in there. You can, you can buy you know, an external camera for these things, but it's ridiculous how much it costs. Completely not worth it in my opinion. Uh, a clamp, a couple pieces of wood sort of deal with a phone holder, which you can buy at the dollar store practically. Everything here is, you know, 10 bucks, right? And then you already have a phone and it takes video and so you're golden. Now, setting it up to be able to see directly in here is a bit of a pain. I won't even bother going through that process, but essentially you've got to pick which lens you're gonna use on the back of your phone. I put my phone in pro mode so that I can um, get the, the um, focus correct. And, uh, and then now I can start recording what we are seeing once I turn on the camera. All right, now the last thing you want to kind of do is, is mess with things too much once you've got uh, your settings dialed in, um, then, uh, you know, don't touch. So, um, what we're going to do now is, just gonna get this thing proper centered before I mess around with it too much and uh, get the focus. Now, I guess the best way to explain this uh, might be to show you. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to move a slide off to the side here a smidge so we can see one of these green lines. Then I'll bring the camera around. Okay, so in my view here we can see let's see if we can see that. You can see that green I don't know if it's going to focus. It might not focus because everything is so Small. But anyways, there's that green line there. That green line there is the green lines on the slide, which you can maybe be able to just barely make out. Those green lines are what we want to focus on uh, for the camera um, uh, in the phone. I don't know if it's going to focus for us today. There we go. So when you can focus on those green lines, you're golden. And because that's where the, uh, the eggs are gonna show up. So it's okay that we've waited a little while to do this because what will happen is all the eggs will, even within that tiny little layer that we've got of, of material, the eggs will sort of float to the top and, and they'll be within the best focal range that we can get. The rest of the focus is done with the focus controllers or depth, or I don't know what they're called, but the the height of the lens to the, the, the slide. <clears throat> it moves the lens up and down. And so that also is a, a thing that you'll wanna figure out before you set up your camera like I have. Okay, so let's set this back up and um, I will start recording on my phone and we'll talk through the, um, the process of getting this to work. All right. So uh, my phone's gone and turned off because we're not using it. Go back, uh, back to pro mode. Okay, so what we don't want to do because it's very finicky. If you've ever used a microscope, you know that the, the place where your eye sits, especially for these one piece eyes thing, one eyepiece things, whatever they're called. Um, it's super finicky and a pain. You gotta close an eye. I don't like it at all, so I like to use my phone. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start recording this and um, we're going to find the spot where, um, where we wanna start looking. Now, the reason that the lines are there is because we want to uh, start at a corner. So let's find the corner uh, probably this way. Okay, so there's the corner um, of the of the lanes or of the segregated parts of this. And uh, what we want to do is start counting 
each section when we see a um, an egg. That's one. That one. That is one there. Okay. Let's see if we can just if we need to adjust this the microscope. Yep. See, that's a little clearer. And I can't even explain how much better it is to be able to use the phone compared to looking through the eyepiece. It is just a lifesaver, in my opinion. Okay, so there we've got one for sure, that one there, where, that, where the arrow is pointing at. I don't know why my arrow is out of focus, but it just is. Um, and in fact, I think I could even zoom in for you guys a little with my phone, and we can take a real close look at that. Like so. Let's zoom in a bit more and uh, hopefully get a real close look. Okay. Ooh. Oh, come on. See, I'm so zoomed in that micro movements make a difference. Okay, so that's what we've got. That is an egg. When you start to recognize those at a zoomed out level, it gets quite easy to do this. Okay, this is an Ascarid egg, and very, very common. It's the most common egg that I've ever seen uh, in any of the tests I've done. Uh, there are other eggs, I don't know if I'll see any in here, but um, there are other eggs like a ringworm and uh, a couple others. Uh, can't remember their names now. Uh, but there's plenty of uh, material out on the internet where you can really look up every different type you're going to find, but this is the most common. Once you find these little oblong looking shapes in here, uh, you can determine you've got an egg. Everything else in this picture right now that we can see, there's just pieces of hay off to the right, um, and, uh, and little bits all around there as well. So let's zoom out a bit and uh, keep looking around a little. I won't probably go through everything. I think I might just zoom in so it fills the screen for us. So we've got a two times um, magnification. And we're gonna go through one lane because I'm not gonna do this whole thing with you guys, I don't think. So we start at the top, right? And we just start looking, start scanning, scanning, scanning. Right, so there's one. Now, one of the things that really bugs me when I get a horse in, um, you can also sort of, if you pull the plate up and down just a smidge, see how the focus goes in and out? That's me doing that with my hands. So if I think I've got something, but it's sitting a little below, um, the focal plane, then I'll just move the plate up and down a little. But anyways, one of the things that really bugs me about getting a horse, especially a wild one, is the first thing people say is, oh, he's probably super wormy. You should worm him. It's like, well, how do you know? You don't know that. How, how would you even know? And they say, what the heck is that? What's that? Piece of gravel? different type of egg. When I don't know, I send it to my vet and I ask him. So don't be afraid to ask people that are more in the know. I don't know everything, but I feel like I know quite a bit. I know enough, but I don't know everything. I never assume so. Uh, if anybody's wondering what these are, uh, these are bubbles. So that's what a bubble looks like. Okay, we're getting twisted here. Let's twist this thing back. Okay, I don't know what that is. I'll send a screenshot of that to my vet. And that's okay not to know. There's another egg right there. Oh, come on. Right, right there. So we can, we can zoom in a little and move this thing around. And there's another example of an egg. Oh. I got my maximum recording time reached. Okay, well, I'm almost out of phone space, so I'll just tell you guys this is what an egg looks like again. So we found another one. I'm going to start doing more of a count um, uh, of this, and, uh, and we'll come back to this a little later. Or when I'm done, I'll pop back in. Well, I'm done. Let's go say hi to our boy really quickly and 
finish off this video. It is pouring rain out. Well, maybe just spitting. I exaggerate again. Uh, so, all done with the fecal egg count. <clears throat> he has mild, whew, mild amounts of um, eggs uh, in his poop. So, um, as I was saying, one of the main reasons I, uh, I do this, um, I, I think it's very important not to indiscriminately um, deworm <laughs> a horse. Uh, I never take it for granted, you know, when somebody just says, well, they're probably wormy, just worm them. Uh, the seller did that. I've had other people suggest that. And uh, there's absolutely no real way to tell if a horse is wormy just by looks, unless they're really unhealthy. I mean, they've got to be really, really in poor shape. You can make an educated guess for sure, but to actually know, it's just, you know, 15 minutes, do, a, do an egg count. It, as you can see, it's not that hard. And um, look at that guy. Look at looking horsey. Definitely needs some weight on him, but not wormy. You know, he's got a mild amount, not too bad. Um, I'd put him at probably about a 25 count, um, and which is kind of enough to proactively deal with um, deal with worms but not really enough to be totally worried in uh, my opinion although it is just my opinion <laughs> what are you doing buddy are we having a, a stare down just a friendly stare down it's very friendly so uh, i encourage everybody you know this is just sort of an introduction, give you an idea of how quickly it can be done, how relatively easy it can be done, uh, a fast way to be able to look in a microscope without having to buy some expensive camera for it. Just get a basic, this is a like $200 microscope, it's pretty good, but you could get just basic 10 times lens on something and, um, and then use your phone. So it's very possible without having to spend a pile of money and record it. So. I consider him not bad. We'll probably worm him. Uh, when the vet gets here, I'll discuss it with him and uh, he'll probably say, go ahead. Uh, we've talked about it in the past, him and I. Nope, oh, he didn't follow. I love it when he does this. He keeps both eyes on me, real careful usually. Anyhow, uh, and uh, you know, that's when we'll deal with everything else as well. Uh, the other thing about worming, uh, sometimes it can actually get rid of uh, little skin bugs as well. So we'll discuss that after the vet comes or when the vet comes and go from there. But uh, hopefully this has been kind of interesting. And I'll uh, see you guys in the next one. Yes, yes, we will. Yeah, we're working on nutrition, health, getting him nice and healthy. He's going through an awful lot of water, cleaned up all his poops, he's normal pooping. But as I mentioned, I've moved the, the water bucket up this way and we're almost empty. I've been keeping sharp eye, a sharp eye on how much water he's drinking. This is his second tub and today is day six. And it's a 40 gallon tub. Oh, hello friend. What can I help you with? You need a scritchy scratch or something, don't you? Yeah, I know. Oh. You see that? He made he made a little noise. I don't know if you guys would have heard it. He's a very friendly sort. Loves his scratches. So let's scratch him. Okay, that's it for now. You're welcome. Okay, I'll see you guys in the next video.